All right, folks, welcome back to Dust and Disc. In today's video, we're going to be playing the Fairways of Fairhope. It is, of course, over in Fairhope, Alabama. Pretty easy to figure that one out. Uh, this course is mostly wooded, but there's some open shots here and there. I'm actually filming this the same day that I filmed the uh, video over at Daphne Central Park, and I'm still here with Zach Benson, who's behind the camera. And again, if you don't know who Zach Benson is, he's from Massachusetts. He's like a 930 rated player, and he was the leader of the eight holes at Maple Hill in this golf park. So you've probably seen him on coverage at Maple Hill, sitting behind the uh, basket of hole eight. So we'll have him here playing with me, and it should be a good time. It's his first time playing the course. He just moved down to Pensacola, Florida from Massachusetts, so he's learning all the courses in the southeast area. This is my second time playing the course, and the first time I played it was quite some time ago, so we're both kind of playing a little bit blind here, but it should be a lot of fun. And I'll start it off. Uh, hole one is about 260, uh, pretty much straight ahead, but uh, I'm probably gonna play a forehand off to the left and have it come back. Oh, that was way better. Oh, what a flare. Oh my goodness, he rolled. That's parked. That's parked. That's better. All right, so I'm about pin high, but I am 40-ish left of the basket. Also, I want to go ahead and cue excuses now. We did just play a full round at Daphne Central, which is already on the YouTube channel. Link will be in the description below. Go watch those two rounds. So I'm a little tired. I already given the camera excuses. Oh, 100%. Have to, right? By the way, Zach's parked, so he doesn't even need the putt. I'll just let him have it. He's gonna get his birdie. It's good. Oh! <laughs> what a putt. It's about right. All right, we're at hole two, 280. Basket is through these trees. Try to zoom in for you. There it is, right there. So basically, you gotta play a forehand out to the left, have it come back in. So that goes with the Lucid X Felon. And he gets a perfect line, but he might be short. It was a headwind uh, for us, so it's gonna cut the distance a little bit. I'm gonna try to do basically the same thing with the same disc, but it's different plastic. Here he is picking his disc. He has now picked the disc. Now he will line up his shot. This is the EO Stamps Chameleon Glimmer Felon. I don't know. Felon. Old Eric Oates. I'll try to make you proud, Eric. Good old EO Oates. I did not make you proud with that. We're very sorry. Just sully sorry, your good name, man. Eric Oakley. I'm really sorry. I just soiled that. Soiled it. Soiled it. Okay, so me and Zach both are same distance, but just a little bit different position. Either way, we're like 60 something feet from the basket. I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're just both really tired, so we got noodle arms. Yep, macaroni elbows. I mean, to be fair, we did play Daphne, which is like one of the most open bomber courses. Yeah, we did this about as backwards as you should. Yeah, I mean, it's like it takes a lot to play. It does. So we're a little worn out, but we couldn't pass up playing fairways with Fairhope, but it's only like 15 minutes down the road from where we were. I'm trying to let Zach get his money's worth since he drove to Pensacola. Scraping every penny up. Ends up right here. Gives it the touch. Dumps a little bit. Still puts him 15 feet from the basket. About a 15er, which uh, might as well be 30 at this point. Very good shot. He's about the same distance away from the basket, so we should both be able to tap in from par from there. So I'll stay at even par, and Zach will be. At uh, one under because you got a birdie on the first hole. At hole three, 311 feet, there's a batting cage kind of blocking the left hand route. So uh, you just got to go to the right with a little backhand action, try to hit that gap to the right of the center trees. Zach absolutely hit the gap with the EMAC Truth, but I think he hit a little root action. Oh, it slid up. It should be Circle's Edge. All right. It's actually the Claymore. Oh, it's a Claymore. I thought, it was that, I thought that was your EMAC, sorry. Very similar. A little okay. tailwind, right? Yeah, very tailwind. That's why I went with the Claymore over the EMAC. Speaking of Claymores. 
I'll be doing that. Say less, claim more. Makes the correction, gets the height. A nice shot. We'll take that. You know, it's always smart to, uh, are you still filming? To throw blue disc uh, when you're filming. Uh, just a heads up. Uh, cameraman and editors like myself really love uh, editing uh, really dark discs in a really dark background. It really picks up the disc flight and it really lets you, the viewers at home, get to see everything. <laughs> so somehow my shot wound up worse off than his, even though it looked better. Hate to see it. I just got no ground action. I must have hit some pine cones or something to stop. Pine cone gate 2021. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's this giant branch poking towards me. And we have a strong, strong left to right wind right now as well. And basically, that branch is right where I don't want it to be, which is in my way. So I can either go over it and try to hyzer in, or I can just pitch under and take my car. I know what you're going to tell me to do. Every time. <laughs> you don't make hero putts if you lay up. You also usually get much worse scores if you listen to my advice. Well, I get my par, so that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. It's a good putt. Oh, just short. So we're both taking pars. Zach will stay at one under, and I'll stay at even. All right, so now we're at uh, hole four, right? 232. Yeah, so the T-pad's right there. Then you go through this tunnel. So now we're gonna get into the woods the rest of the course, pretty much. And I'm trying to get the basket for you. It's basically right there, like between these little skinny trees. So you need something that's gonna go straight, maybe a little bit to the right at the end of the flight. And you just gotta get down this tunnel and hope you don't hit any trees, which is uh, easier said than done. All right, so Zach's got the box. Again, from the T-pad, the basket's gonna be a little bit to the right. So you could throw like maybe a, flippy forehand or some type of backhand turnover shot it's probably your best bet on this hole looks like he's gonna go with the forehand with the verdict i think uh he rolled it too much but it's coming back but i don't know what kind of approach he's gonna have from there i i've i don't know this course at all and i don't know what's over there so we'll see Yeah, but I didn't go far enough. All right, so there's Zach. His disc is under that tree, and the basket is right there. So he's got a decent distance to cover, and he's got some trees in his way right here, these two in particular. And he's also having to play through a shrub, and yeah, we'll see what he does. It's like a harp. A little harp turnover. Ooh, that's going to be tricky. He might have some trees in his way for uh, his par putt there. I, on the other hand, landed right here with the Justice. I just didn't push it far enough. It's a little bit too overstable of a disc for the flight path I needed. Probably needed like a forehand that flew a little bit more flippy. A little bit more understable. A little soft flex backhand. Yeah, or putt or whatever. Like a flexy putt. Flex was there. You had the right line. Right line all the way. That's a par for you, boy. He jammed it. What a clutch. He stays at one under and I stay at even par. All right, so now we're at hole five, 256 feet. And this thing is interesting. As you come off the tee pad, you have to throw either like a really touchy forehand through this maze of trees or some type of backhand turnover and the basket is right through there trying my best to capture i think i got it there in the middle you could also play something wide through that gap and have it come to the right but usually people are going to come through this gap with some type of slight like turnover and just have it fade right towards the basket with either some type of flip up forehand or some type of backhand turnover play i feel like i mostly see people do backhands with understable putters but we'll see all right so zach's up first he's gonna go it looks like a loose next warden See what you can do. 
Oh, he gets through a sneaky gap, sneaky local gap. He's off to the right, and I mean, it's fine. You're still going to have like a great par approach, which honestly, for this tricky of a hole, I really um, wanted to hit that on a bit more hyzer and hit that like absolutely unnecessary right side gap because I thought it would be funny. Oh, that was so close to being perfect. That was a, that, like a game of inches right there. Yeah, unfortunately. So the obvious bad news is I hit that tree and uh, kick left. Good news is I have a pretty wide open forehand approach shot to get to the basket. Take the uh, crystal flex zone, a little get freaky. Try to get freaky towards the basket. Good play, height looks good. Might be short. Maybe just a touch, but you're inside the circle though. We'll see. Less than a 20 footer, I'd say. So now we're at where Zach landed his loose the X Warden on the little backhand turnover. He's got a, I don't know, 60, 65 footer for the birdie. This is a very touchy hole though. So taking a par, no issue. Oh yeah, definitely a good headwind blowing. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's fading out a little bit too much, maybe. It's gonna be a little bit of a tester for his par putt. All right, so uh, I have a little tester for my par as well. I'll put my some half of pudding. Let's see if we can jam it though. Oh boy. Yeah, that's gonna be a bogey for me, unfortunately. Let's see if Zach can get his par here. Should be able to, not too bad, about 15. Yep, so he will stay at one under and I will go to one over par, unfortunate. All right, so now we're at hole six, a tough par three. It is 390-ish feet, it is basically through there and then a little bit to the left. I unfortunately cannot see the basket from here, but if you look at that kind of white sign thingy on that tree up there, it's kind of just to the left of that. I don't even know if you can see the little white sign thingy. It's like right there in the center of the screen. It's like a little bit to the left of that. So a lot of people will either play up the gut with something like hyzer flip and try to ride straight. A lot of other people though will play the big hyzer play out in this open space and then try to have it cut left in. Uh, but it's a really hard par through the birdie uh, for that reason. But we'll see what Zach's got. So Zach put a wide raider out there. Way too wide. And it's not bad. I mean, you're definitely going to be able to approach from there. Yeah. Fight through. Left side. I actually don't know what kind of look I have from over there. Play because I didn't get up enough. I wanted to get past that big tree and then have it flare left. So I was about 40 feet short of where I needed to be for placement. So now I have kind of a tricky situation here. The tailwind. Skip only. a backhand hyzer is the play here. Let's okay. see if he realizes it or if he goes for something else. We'll go, we'll go backhand skip. Got a quality well, football like going on here. He's debating. And He's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Unsure. Making decisions, he's gonna go look to the bag, changes up his thought process, grabs the felon. Maybe he's gonna follow what I said to you. Folks at home, we're all gonna have to find out together whether he goes with my shot. No, it looks like he's decided to go with what I thought it was a good play here. Oh, and he's nailed it, ladies and gentlemen, with a horrible tree kick at the end, but he's still gonna be edge of circle. <laughs> oh, that was so unfortunate. That's all good. It happens in this golf. But now we got Zach up, and uh, he just didn't quite hyzer in enough. He's got a clear look at the basket, though, I think. I can't quite tell from his angle. Looks like he's... He's got to hit a gap, put it that way. But he's got a little bit more of a look than I did. A little bit of awkward footing, though, with that uphill climb. Looks like he's going to go at it with a flex harp backhand. Oh, that's looking good. Oh no, that was looking perfect up until the very end. 
All right, now we're at Zach's live for his par putts. He's got about a 30 footer, I would say. Got a little bit of a tree in front of him. I have to shed a lot to the right, not really sure. Oh, he went through the tree. What a legend. Run that one in for sure. I was wondering if that's what you were going to do because that, like, for the film, that's great. But that's definitely a tough putt to, to try to go for. I hate straddle putting and will do everything in my power to not straddle putt. That's fair. Pro side and everything. These baskets suck. Just gonna throw that one out there. Yep, these baskets are but terrible. I also didn't throw a great putt. It was definitely a little bit too far. Pro to the side, right. but just a little too far. Yeah, pro a little side. too far, right? All right, so now we're at hole seven. It's 240 ish feet, but it's uphill, so it's gonna play longer. It's a tight tunnel. And then I'm pretty sure the basket's just a touch to the right of where I'm at. I unfortunately just can't show it on film. I have to like walk up there and then come back. But it's basically just a touch to the right. So a flippy. Huh? You can see the seven if you come over here. Okay. Like through the trees. Oh, yeah. Just a touch to the, like you said, just a touch to the right. It's just a touch to the right. You can see it right there. Okay. Looks like a beat up felon. Super beat up. Fusion, I think. Well like Let's see how it flies. And it flew about like a cast iron skillet. Oh, what? That second kick was unreal. You love to see it. Just a little off from my line, too. All right, I'm trying to think what I want to do here. Yep. Good little rollout, center cut. I just want to par here, so that's, that's fine. That's perfect. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. All right, so now we're at his lie. He's kind of dealing with a similar situation to me. His angle's maybe a little better, but I mean, it's basically the same thing. Pretty garbage, but we're still gonna run it for the two and take the four. He's gonna try to do a little bit of a flex harp forehand nailed and he absolutely nailed that tree like a champion and he <laughs> he hit them both ah! <laughs> and that's disc golf right there that noise might be able to slide a little hyzer putt through something we'll see no no well i think you should be all right from there all right, so hopefully we're just going to do uh, some tap-ins. Mine is a par tap-in. His is a four tap-in. So let's see what happens. I actually thought that wasn't going in. Really? It, like, it, 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 looked, it, looked, it looked bad. All right, so now we're at hole eight, 247 feet downhill Mando right there. And, and I'm pretty sure the basket sits just a touch to the right. Correct. So, yeah, very similar to last hole, but downhill instead of uphill basically I'm gonna throw in get free zone down. here oh he pured it an absolute money shot oh it's so it's short it rolled back towards me it rolled back towards me like 10 or 15 feet so i'm like 40 50 from feet. our angle viewers it's an amazing perfect shot in front <laughs> of the basket until further notice yeah. i'm just happy i'm hitting gaps yeah that was it perfect like you couldn't hit that gap any better. yeah so I'll, I'll i'll take that small victory that i hit the gap because it's definitely a tight hole Sweet victory. i can't wait for the out of context on what i just said <laughs> and he i mean that's a game of inches right there that was almost the perfect flex so we'll see what happens when we get down there all right so red zach's lie his harp a little bit off the fairway He's got an opening this way to basically just get back on. So maybe some type of forehand pitch out might be able to get him out of trouble. We'll see. Or a forehand roller. Thumber roller, actually. Thumber roller, okay. Don't see too many of those. That's why. I mean, we'll say this, you made progress up the fairway. Silver lining. Back to Zach. under the basket, park for the four. Check my bar. 
perfect par. All right, so we're at the last hole of the front nine. Uh, it is hole nine, 224 feet. Basically, you just have to go through this gap straight ahead and then have it break left. So an overstable putter is probably the play, backhand. I'm gonna go ahead and go up the crystal flat zone and uh, just hope that I get through that gap and hope that I get the flare I need to get to the basket because a birdie would be really nice since I have yet to get one on this front nine. I have uh, dabbled in the bogey, so. And I did a Yankee Doodle. But Man, somehow I got through. Back to the fairway, though. He went to town riding on a pony. Stuck a feather in his hat. But still managed to find the fairway. Yeah, that was rough. That was uh, not it, Chief, I'd say. What's say? That was it. That's literally the exact play you want. He is probably right under the basket for the birdie. Think about, like, dead center of that gap, smooth and nothing else. Just like, um, I'm trying to think of how to explain it. Like, don't think about popping it at the end. Really just smooth through and really let the disc do all the work. Put it on a bit of hyzer because it should pop up a bit. can't play well, I can teach. And that's great, because I needed those lessons. So, big shout out to Zach for the help. So he's got a tree kind of blocking right in front of him. Well, I could do this. Wide open to the left, a little bit close to the right, but open enough he could make the shot. So it's all really a comfort shot here. I'm just Looks... not great at timing the path of bending is the problem. Same thing as the, the last shot, let the disc do the work. You know this turn, so nice and flat or a touch of Anheuser and smooth and soft. Nailed it. Nailed it. Great shot, bud. Easy birdie for Zach. All right, folks. So that's going to do it here for the front nine at the fairways of Fairhope. Not quite sure what the score is, but I'll have it down below for everyone to look at now. If you enjoyed the video, please do follow and subscribe, comment, help feed the algorithm, help grow the channel. Big thanks to Zach here who's been playing with me. We'll have the back nine up soon. So definitely follow up and we'll see you next time.